Hi, I'm Allison the Crocheter. And I'm Vivian the Knitter, and you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. Hello, and welcome to episode 53 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. This is a knitting and crocheting podcast hosted by me and my mom, Vivian. I'm recording from my home here in Edinburgh. And I'm recording from my home here in Virginia in my new sewing studio. Yay! For the first time. Nice. Yeah, it's a mess right now. Well, I mean, I feel like your sewing room is only, you know, not a mess right after you clean it. <laughs> then it's a mess again. That's true. In my, usually in my throes of creativity, I just throw things, I pull things out of bins and throw things on the floor and look at it and, you know, and, and it doesn't get cleaned up until after I'm finished with the project. And depending on the project, that could be a very long time. <laughs> Right. Well, hello everyone. Thanks for joining us. Hello everybody. Um, it's it hasn't been that long since we last um released an episode because we were a bit late last time. So apologies for that, but it hasn't resulted in one less episode. We're still recording. No. It was a, a little short, but we recorded. Yeah. Right. So, we have a on theme BuzzFeed quiz for today. <laughs> that you picked. Yes, I did. Do you want to pick the, the full or read out the full title of the quiz? I don't. I don't think I actually read it. Okay, the but the oh, that's the whole full title, huh? The full yeah, title is quite long. Are you Luna Lovegood, Sabrina, Morticia? Take this spooky aesthetic quiz to unveil your inner witch. Oh, right. What's your inner witch? I got Glinda the Good Witch. <laughs> Uh, from the Wizard of Oz, it says, you're almost, in quotes, pure of heart, but not 100%. You are a witch after all. <laughs> I got that one as well. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, the very first time I took the quiz, when I first found it, I had Luna Lovegood. And I can't remember, oh, nice. I can't remember any, of the, <laughs> any of the answers to uh, repeat that uh, conclusion. So, yeah. Well... We'll just say that when you took that quiz to begin with, you were feeling a bit more Luna Lovegood, and right now you're a bit more Glinda. Okay, I'll take that. Um, <laughs> although I wonder, because ha- have you watched any of the new Sabrina on no, I have Netflix? N- oh, you know what? I did see a little bit of it, because Madeline was watching that before she went off to school. Yeah. I wonder if this quiz uses... That Sabrina? Hmm. That Sabrina. Or... It's definitely a lot darker than the old Sabrina. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you seen it? Yeah, no, I watched it. Oh, you have? Oh, oh okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, um, right. So we probably have some similar answers, but we don't necessarily have to because technically, so say there's ten questions, I could answer like the first five with the Glinda answers, and then you could have answered the second five with the Glinda answers, um, and then it would have worked out like that. But yeah, that's my true. guess is that we definitely got pick a spooky servant the same because I'll tell you the options I didn't pick. I didn't pick a spider or a ghost or a toad or an owl or a snake. You could have picked an owl. You 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 do like owls. Yeah, yeah. But I suspect we both picked the cat. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Uh huh. Is that the most Glinda y thing? I think probably. I don't know. I would think an like owl is more... An owl's nice. No, but maybe an owl would be more Luna, because mm. it's more like Harry Potter. Yeah. Whereas, like, a cat's, like, cuddly. Okay. What about uh, your hat? They're, they're, I mean, they're uh, not all hats. No, and they're not all spooky. <laughs> but I picked one of the ones that maybe isn't a hat. It's, like, the veil. Uh-huh. Black spiderweb looking veil. I picked the crown. Because I'm the yeah, queen. I, I, I think I was I was tempted by that. Well, see, I was tempted by the crown as well because it would have matched the spooky location that I picked. Oh, which spooky location did you pick? Did... Well, guess if it goes the with the crown. Well, if, if it goes with the crown, yeah, it's like the castle-looking one. The stone oh castle. yeah, yeah. Did we say that already, or did you skip it? And I just no. missed it because your father walked in while no, you were talking. I was just saying that like oh, okay. I almost picked the crown because the uh, crown would have matched the, that uh, location. Yeah, that's, I, that's, location I that's the location I picked too. Yeah. Okay, what about the uh, spooky snack? A spooky snack. <laughs> um, I feel like they weren't great options. <laughs> I went for the cupcake with the really with a ghost dumpy looking <laughs> ghosts. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> they're not derpy looking as you like to say. 
Are they? Yeah, they are a bit derpy looking. But I think because that's what I would want to eat, like a chocolate cupcake uh-huh. with frosting on top. It sounds good. Because there's the healthy option. Did you, did you notice what I did? I option? did see the healthy healthy option. I did not pick that. I picked apples. Well, actually, I don't apple slices and oh, you know what? Apple do you think slices. Yogurt covered raisins. What are you talking about? The healthy op. Oh, there's two healthy options. The green oh. one. The, it looks like a one-eyed monster. I don't uh, know what they use for the eye. I thought they were cookies. Really... I picked that one. Yeah. I thought they were cookies. <laughs> <laughs> They're not cookies. It's two really thin green apple slices with peanut butter on the inside. And I think the teeth are yogurt raisins. Oh. <laughs> she wants a redo. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought they were like some sort of cookies. Oh, no. See, I, I think see. I thought that at first as well. It's like, oh, those are funny looking. I picked those. Okay, my guess is you would have gone for the brownie otherwise. Yes, I did. Or the cookies? Yes, I would have. I would have picked the brownies. Cute. Yeah. And right. what about what about a uh, spooky scene? Spooky scene. Oh, I didn't really know what to pick. So, because I think out of all of them, I've only seen Hocus Pocus and Castle. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, for sure, those are the only two ones I've seen. <laughs> So I picked Casper. I picked Hocus Pocus because it's my favorite mm. Halloween movie. Yeah. Um, are you, are you, well, you don't have any kids in the house anymore, so you're probably not doing anything for Halloween, are you? No, but I'll be giving out candy. There's kids in the neighborhood. Uh, good candy, I hope, not apples. <laughs> no, I won't be giving, uh, I won't be gi- giving out apples. I'll be good. I mean, I didn't actually I'm think thinking, I'm thinking, thinking maybe I'll buy the candy that I don't like, so I don't feel the urge to binge on them after <laughs> so like what kind of candy would that be um the dum dum mix <laughs> <laughs> well that's one thing that i guess like obviously halloween is not as big of a thing here and like i think it's people i mean people i talk to always say like oh yeah halloween's become a bigger thing like within the recent uh-huh not like really recent past but i don't know the last however many years ever since harry potter but, came out well, i don't even know about that maybe but the trigger cheating, I don't think they really don't has. do that. No. no. Um, plus, plus being in a city. Uh-huh. But I don't. I don't have any Halloween plans, so. No. Oh. No excuses to dress what up was, or anything. What was your accessory? Um, I picked the book. Oh. I picked the wand. What? Wait. So what? What do we have that was the same? The castle. The cat. And, and the, the cat. castle. And yeah, that's it. Is that it? What? Uh, is that, is that all? Location, servant, spooky hat. Oh, there's the flowers. Snack. See, oh, the flowers. I picked the, the white roses that are drooping. I picked that first, but that's when I got Luna. Um, I picked the pretty ones in the upper right hand corner with the. Yeah, I almost picked them, but they're not very spooky. They're not. It's like, well, these aren't spooky. Neither are are the peonies on the other side. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. there's one droopy peony. The pink ones. Oh, the, you you pick the colorful ones. Yeah. I think. So yeah. I I, well, I don't know. I, don't I guess they're that. vaguely like the color of them is like I darker. Don't know. Well, peonies the background bloom in the spring or summer. I don't think they bloom in the fall. No. Um. Right. So, but that's the thing. Like, if there's only no, I'm not gonna do this. Nope. This is, <laughs> that's gonna be boring. I'm not gonna talk about that. Okay. Never mind. I was gonna go into like the scoring of quizzes. <laughs> Right, so we're both glad. <laughs> and I'm the nerd. Okay. So... Okay, that's our Buzzfeed quiz. I'm Glinda the Good Witch. Yeah. Okay, Glinda the Good Witch. Do you have any whips? The same exact whip that I had last time. I seem to say that a Your lot. Bubbly my brioche. bubbly brioche. Oh my gosh, this thing is coming out beautifully, uh-huh. but it's killing me just to just to keep up with the friggin'. <laughs> Knit along. It's like, I don't know how these ladies are keeping up. The first few sections, if you posted the evening after the, the subsequent section came out, like of your finished mm-hmm. previous section, you get entered in, in, you know, in the contest. And so I just assumed it was going to be the same way for the last section. But, but um, Jen's like, no, no, you have one more day. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. So I actually finished that section in time. But, you know, by the skin of my teeth, I, mm-hmm. I don't um, – <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I worked on it all the time, then I would be able to finish each section pretty quickly. But I have a life, 
And mm-hmm. right now, I'm just, I just, at this point, I just want to finish it so I can start working on my other projects. <laughs> but it, it is coming along oh, wow. beautifully. Look how big it is. So I'm more than halfway done. So would you say that's like a intermediate brioche pattern in terms of like the complicated way it splits or is that quite advanced? I really don't know because brioche itself is not very beginnerish to begin with. Yeah, right. Um, but I imagine like the first thing you would learn to do brioche with would just be like the single tracks. I don't know what to call them. Stripes. Yeah, the the basic the basic brioche stitches. Yeah, or is that one like they like fork do different types of forking and then rejoining and You're probably right, it's it's intermediate. It's just you're increasing by instead of just increasing by one or two, you're increasing and decreasing by threes and fours. Because there's a, the, right. d- different and legs. Did you say what yarn you're using for that? It is, it's from Ancient Arts Yarns, Socknado. Wait, wait, wait. What? Is the color called Socknado? No, or is the, the base called Socknado? I think this base is called so- Socknado. Do you think they named it that before or after Sharknado? Because <laughs> that's all I can think of. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, hand dyed in Canada, made in Italy. Uh, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And the actual color? So so one of the color is called Iron Horse, and I think that's the, the navy blue that I'm using. And the other one is called Machu Picchu. That's the variegated one. And that's what colors? Those are. It's a gray base. With lime green and a little bit of blues and purples, a little bit of browns and oranges, but mostly greens and blues. So is that like the dominant color? Does the navy get pushed behind? Because when I look at it, it looks more light than dark. Yes. Than the shawl. Yes. The I use the the light as the the main color and the navy mm-hmm. as the All right, I see. the contrast. And is color. it revert? So wait, on the back side, is it the same? No, it's, well, I mean, it's just... There's an opposite. It's opposite. But because the... I mean, it doesn't look as nice. Can you see? Mm, don't put it up against the light. What am I going to put it over my face? Yeah. <laughs> put it over <laughs> your face. <laughs> okay, yeah, I can sort of see. It's um, it's harder to see the the the, the trails, exactly. the vininess of it. The you know. So is that because of the yarn you picked, or is that just the way brioche works? That's a good question. <laughs> I think it's the way the brioche works because because of the way I'm increasing and decreasing. I'm only increasing and decreasing with the with the main yarn, the main color. So that's when you see where you see the right. bubbles and stuff like that. And then when you, I mean, you would think it would be like a, a negative in the back, but it's not quite. It's like it's almost, but not quite. Mm-hmm. But it's pretty. I'll take your word for it. Okay. Very nice. So how far... How many sections have been released and how many sections are there? To there go? are, f- uh, I think there's five. You know, means hang on. Let me open up my pattern. We, we are on the fourth section. And I think there's uh-huh. just, there's five sections in total. Let's see. Yes. Five sections. Okay. Which the fifth section will be released this week sometime. Um, so I, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish the fourth section before the fifth section is because i'm starting to slow down i'm like i'm starting to think oh, i want to i did do one row of my east coast girl cardigan just uh just the pearl row I can't believe you <laughs> <laughs> but that's all i did in the last two weeks has it been two weeks since we last recorded it seems like a long time but, yeah, I think it's been two weeks, but, but less than when it, because it took a while for us to actually yeah. release it. Well, I've been um, pretty busy since we started it. Moving? Anyway. No, I already moved. It was the traveling. I had to do some more traveling. Oh, right. Sorry. So I was gone for a week. Okay, what what um, kind of whips do you have? The same as last time. <laughs> <laughs> we are so worried. <laughs> Why anybody still choose to listen to us, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, so I am working on my Corbatin sweater. I always want to say cardigan, but it's a sweater. By Rachel Henri. Yes. Henri. <laughs> <laughs> I will be glad when this is over so I can stop pretending to say French words. <laughs> Names. Um, I really haven't done that much because I've also been traveling. I was in London and then I had 
a girl guide camp this weekend. So I, but I just think stupid. I started, I don't even know. I was talking about ripping back the sleeves and doing them again last time, right? Well, I don't know how many times I ripped back these sleeves because it's driving me crazy. So I had to rip back one because I realized the color between the two skeins was just too different. So I tried a different combination. So I ripped out one for that, ripped out another because it was too big, and then ripped out another because it was too... No, no. You only no, have no. two sleeves. How did you rip out the third sleeve? <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Sleeve number one, I did it. The whole sleeve. Sleeve number two, I started and then was like, you know what? This is going to be too tight because sleeve number one is too tight. Uh-huh. I'm going to try and make it bigger. That was where you were last time. Correct? Yeah, maybe. So sleeve number two, I was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I started a sleeve two and then realized that the color was wrong, but also it was too going to be too small. So I didn't finish it. I got like maybe halfway, if that, ripped it out. I was like, going to try and make it bigger. So I made it bigger. And then I realized it was too big. So I ripped it out and then I did it again. I was like, okay, that, that's good. And then I ripped out sleeve one. <laughs> I don't know, but I've already lost I had to redo C1. <laughs> okay, so, but I've ripped that out so many times. But then, even when I was trying... So, so I'm doing them at the same time now, right? Uh-huh. So, I'm doing eight rows, and then a decrease, and then eight rows, and a decrease. So, I'll do eight rows and decrease, and then switch to the next sleeve, and do eight rows and decrease. And so, I was doing that, and then I realized one of the sleeves, you could really see where I started the sleeve, uh-huh. because the stitch was just bigger uh-huh. than the previous stitches. I was just like, why is it doing that? I was like, okay. So I ripped it out, and I'm like, I just need to do that that first row tighter uh-huh. so that it blends in better. Because the color already doesn't completely match, so this, the actual look of the stitch needs to match. So I ripped it out, intending to do the first row tighter again. Uh-huh. Brought it to work, forgot that that was what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> so I was doing it at lunch while I was talking to people, did a few rows, got home, did a few more rows, and I was like, crap. <laughs> you can tell the difference. I didn't do the first row tight. Like, I just completely forgot. So I had to rip it out again. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm doing the first row tighter. So I've done that. And it looks much better. <laughs> oh, good. And it blends in better. Oh, that's um, good. So now yeah, I'm just still working on the sleeves. <laughs> the end. <laughs> I honestly Why don't know when I'm going to finish this. Why is it I think I've reached, I've reached a point where <laughs> I could get bored and be like, oh, I'll work on something else. But I'm... But I, I, I don't want to do that. I just need to finish this. Mm-hmm. And then I can t- do other things. Because <laughs> I just don't want to get distracted because it's taking me so long already. You know? I feel mm-hmm. like if I get distracted, I'll just let it sit there forever and ever and ever and ever. But yeah. Um, do you have any FOs? Because I don't have any FOs. I, have, I do not have any FOs at all. <laughs> oh, God. So no FOs. I do have Yarny pits and bobs we're really skipping through this episode aren't we (laughs) this is just like a brief life update um (laughs) what's your yarny bits and bobs well the reason why i was traveling was because um i had to well i didn't have to wait i I went up to maine and i visited madeline we went to the 24-hour ll bean store (laughs) what (laughs) in freeport where you know where their flagship store is and it's open 24 hours. It's open 24 hours. Oh, we were not there for 24 <laughs> hours, but it's open 24 <laughs> hours. It, it's about ridiculous. It's about an hour north of where she was. And she was like, I want I want bean boots. And I'm like, fine. And and we went up there, stayed overnight. But anyway, so, at, so we're driving up from her school to Freeport. And neither of us had lunch. And we're both starving. But we're like, okay, we'd have, we're have going to have lunch. And we couldn't really find anything. And we're just, like, driving around. And this is, like, south of Freeport. And there's this, literally, we're driving one way. And I see, yarn store! And I went, ah! <laughs> and I make, we made a U-turn. And it went into the plaza. And there was this yarn store. And it was called Mother of Pearl. It was a cute little uh-huh. store. Um, they, there was, it was quite busy. There was a lot of people there. I met... Uh, a few ladies from the Albany area. <laughs> oh, nice. We chatted, and because it's it's peak leaf peeping season. Well, it was when I was there, uh, and I see. Um, and probably last weekend was too. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, there are a lot of people. And do I need any more yarn? No, I do not need any more yarn. So I didn't get. You it. bought me some yarn. <laughs> 
I bought. I did buy sock uh sock blank. Where did I put it? It was it was in their clear, clearance bin because it was obviously made for some event, and it says 2019 on it, and also has <laughs> it says spa 2019. But I really spa. like yeah. They must have like some kind of spa thing, like they that, that maybe they, it, maybe it stands for something. No, I think no. Okay, I think they they do like a some tor- sort of retreat in the spa uh-huh. part of it. All right, and I really like the the colors of the yarn, so I just. That was the only thing. Well, I bought that and a pair of scissors. Uh, so wait, wait. Let me actually see the yarn blank again. It says Spa 2019 in like it's, bubbly pink letters. Uh-huh. And it's on got, mostly white background. It's like, no, it's like a light blue. Oh, it's light blue. And With darker blue bubbles and... And like a fish tail green. or a mermaid tail. Mermaid tail. A green mermaid. Is it green mermaid tail? Yeah. And then orange fish. Well, I'm assuming it's a mermaid tail because their shop uh, logo has a mermaid on it. And then, that makes sense. Mother of Pearl. Yeah. P-U-R-L. Yes. And, oh, they must make the yarn. It says Blue Moon Yarn, and it has Mother of Pearl on the label. Hmm. So, I guess maybe they do their own yarn, too. I didn't even know that. I didn't look very carefully. It says, hand-dyed. <laughs> You're just like, I want it. I just want it. Hand-dyed in tiny batches in the Mother of Pearl dye kitchen. Oh, they dye their own yarn. Yeah. Okay. Their own in-house dyed yarn. Nice. And and I bought these cute little scissors. But I should have I should have gotten one for you. I didn't even think about you. I mean, I was just kidding. <laughs> no, but later on, I was like, oh, I should have gotten another one for Allison. They they look like little Chinese scissors, except they're tiny. Oh, you know what? You have a pair kind of like them. The one that was that used to be your your great grandmother's. I mean, they're the ones I use all the time. But they're even smaller than that. If I can find them. Apparently, I can't find them. Um, they're sm- even smaller than that, and they have like a like a silicone cover where that your your fingers go, and mm-hmm. there's like a little silicone like attached to it. There's a silicone um, cover for the tip, so you okay can protect your bag. It's like this little. Right. I got one for me and one for Paula. I didn't get one for you. Okay, it's fine. You don't love me as much as you love Paula. No, apparently not. So, but you do, you do have your great grandmother's sister. So there's that. That that's yes. the one that I gave you that used to belong to her. Yes, so that's my yarning bits and bobs. Um, Madeline and I, uh, we didn't spend that much time in Freeport. We just went to the restaurant across the street from El, El, the Ella Bean store, which is open by I think one of the Bean family members, Linda Bean, or something like that. And we had some fabulous food. She had. A uh, lobster grilled cheese sandwich. Oh, <laughs> she, she she really wanted the lobster back, but it's like, oh, that's too much cheese. We have the lactose intolerance issue, and she didn't want that much cheese, so she had the grilled cheese sandwich instead. And it I it was mostly lobster. There was it was very little cheese, but mostly lobster. It looked really good. And I had the Thanksgiving feast sandwich, and it's just. It's just Thanksgiving on a piece of bread. Gravy all over. It's open face with gravy all over. It was so good. Nice. Yep. Um, uh, so I have a bit of yarny bits and balls, but I'm also maybe going to make it a, a book club segment. I don't ooh. Know. <laughs> so we got a new bookstore just around the corner from me, or up the road. And oh, it's very large and we went in and it still smells like fresh new paint and it was very busy because it hasn't been open very long so obviously everyone's walking by going "Ooh, what's this and walking in <laughs> but they have a few other stores in st andrews and bath and maybe somewhere else so they'd have a lot of author events and like author signing so they had a lot of books that were signed and i saw this one and i had already heard of it and it and it happened to be a signed edition and not that that really matter to me but so i bought it and it's this golden fleece a journey through britain's knitted history by esther rudder uh-huh. i i don't know i bought another book recently as well to do with fabric i haven't started that one but i've started this one and i've read chapter one so i'm going to tell you some interesting facts that i learned from chapter one <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah like like i said it's this woman, so she took a year and traveled around uh, the UK, and each chapter 
has some sort of theme. So the first one, the first chapter is called uh, Dent Dale Gloves. So she's making a pair of gloves for one thing. Mm-hmm. But since it's the first chapter, there's a bit more like just sort of introductory information on wool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so apparently Romans brought the fur, brought short fleece sheep over to the UK um, and the British sheep were more, had a lot more like long fleece. Mm-hmm. And the Roman short fleeced sheep were also self shedding, so um, I guess because of the warmer climate, maybe I, I I don't know. So you could just sort of pull the wool off mm-hmm. when it was ready to be yeah. sheared, uh-huh. um, but it was also really white wool, so it was easier to dye. So when they bred that with the British sheep, they're sort of best of both. Uh, wool was so important in the Middle Ages that Edward the Third who reigned beginning in 1327, just so you have a reference for when I'm talking, proclaimed that the Lord Chancellor would sit on a bale of wool, and they still do that. Really? But it's it's called the wool sack, and it's like a sort of fancy bench, like it's covered in red velvet. Uh But it's still called the wool sack, and it's stuffed with wool from all over the country. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, that's kind of cool. so random. (laughs) Um, And then the actual gloves, the Dentdale gloves... Um, refers to Dentdale knitting, which, so between the end of the 16th century to the early like 20th century, uh, that area was known for their hand knitting. And the the knitting style, which the book said was developed to maximize speed while ma- maintaining quality, they would like move back and forth while they were knitting, and it was called swaving. Uh-huh. Uh, and it, the quote says, it was caused by lifting the right arm to sh- strike the loop on the left needle quickly and accurately before slipping the wool over and the stitch off. So just basically that motion of... Uh-huh. So I guess rather than... I mean, I don't know the different styles of knitting, but like, so I know for me, I have to like lift the whole bit of yarn, grab it with my hand and like physically pull it over uh-huh. the, the needle. Whereas can some people just put it on their finger and sort of do it without having to like move their whole arm. Yeah, I don't move my whole arm. I just kind of flick my So this makes it kind of sound like they do move their whole arm, but because they're doing it in like this like, you know, uh, <laughs> rocking motion, uh-huh. it was that just it was fa- I don't know, speed it up. It sounds like it would make it slower. <laughs> I don't I don't know, but they talk about like uh they would like sing songs to concentrate the same way as like, uh-huh. you know, other sorts of old-timey activity chores. Um, <laughs> Um, what else? Oh, back on the sheep. I don't know how to pronounce it. So, soy, S O A Y, S O Soy. I don't know. But they're they're Britain's oldest native sheep, which mm-hmm. go back to, to like 800 BCE. Um, sorry, no, they're the one with the self shedding fleece. But mm-hmm. they now still live in Saint Kilda, which is an island, a Scottish island. Mm-hmm. But the people don't live on Saint Kilda anymore. So the, self, sheep. the self-shedding thing is helpful. Ah. Yeah. Um, but they're pretty much genetically identical to those Iron Age sheep, so they're kind of like living fossils. Oh, wow. And then, sorry, this is just me saying facts, like, f- fun fact corner about <laughs> wool and knitting. Uh, because Shetland was a part of Norway until 1472, there's a lot of Norse words in farming and knitting up there. Uh-huh. So the parent so... They have different words to describe the color of sheep, which I assume it's like kind of the same as how you get different words for different colors of horses if you're a horse person and like the patterning. So I'm not going to pronounce any of these right, but <laughs> there's bursuget means irregularly variegated. Bielset refers to a sheep with differently colored bands around their neck. Animals which are dark with white patches at their head are smurlset. Pale beasts with snow white faces are snail it, and those <laughs> who's with lower legs a different color to their bodies are suck it. <laughs> that was funny. And those are all my fun facts. Sorry. Oh. Well, that's pretty cool. So how, how big is this book? It is this big. Thank you. About 300 pages long, oh, just wow. under 300 pages. So the next chapter is called Propagansy. There's a bit on revolutionary knitting, so craftivism, I assume, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Highland kilts and stockings. A not-so-itsy-bitsy bikini. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's 12 chapters. So yeah. So whenever I finish a second chapter, I'll come with more fun facts. <laughs> and 
maybe prepare them in a way that's slightly more interesting than just me being like, and then this sheep, and then that sheep, and then this knitting, and then that sheep. I, th- I found it fascinating. <laughs> I thought the, the wool sack thing was quite funny. Yeah, that they they still do that. I wonder if they mm-hmm. even know why it's called the wool sack. The people that are, are actually, who is it? The chancellor who sits on the it? Lord the Lord chancellor sits on it. The Lord chancellor sits on it. Does he um, know what it is? But apparently... I think they they opened it at one point. Was it all rotted? I, no, it was. <laughs> but the, it was actually horse hair. Oh, and then that's yeah. And then that's when they restuffed it with wool from all over the country. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh what a scandal! <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was pretty interesting. Do you have anything for Nertastic? No. Wow, I'm really sure that was. I have shop talk. Finally. Yay! Well, now that I have internet, I can open the shop. Okay. So by the time this goes out, well, the shop is open. Yeah. So I, I, I won't be sewing. I don't think anytime soon because of the just the utter chaos that is my sewing room right now. Mm-hmm. But I did um, squirrel away a lot of already made bags before we left mm-hmm. New Hampshire. So I'm slowly putting those back in the shop. Okay. Well, in case we have any new listeners, because we haven't really talked about the shop in the last few episodes because you've been in the process of moving and everything, the podcast is sponsored by my mom's Etsy shop, which is Pearl and Plum on Etsy, and she sells handmade project bags Yep, of all different sorts and sizes. Yeah, and tote bags, and mostly for knitters, but you don't have to be a knitter to use my bag. I like... I use... I mean, because I have so many sock bags from uh-huh. you, a lot of them are, um, what's the word? Rejects. <laughs> Rejects, yeah. <laughs> um, I've obviously got the ones that my projects are in, but I also have one that I've just like folded it open a little bit. Uh-huh. So it's like a, a little Makeup? basket. Uh-huh. So one has a bunch of wires. <laughs> like it's just, it just sits <laughs> on the floor next to one of the plugs and uh-huh. it has like all of our wires in it. <laughs> and... I use them for like traveling and stuff, just yeah. to like keep think loose bits together in the suitcase. So they're so very handy. They're good. They're good for organizational things. Mm-hmm. I had a whole bunch of them that I used to organize, also wires and you know little little things that you need to travel with, uh, um, converters and stuff like that. Yeah, all those things that things you need. that would otherwise be rattling around. Yeah, so um, I'm slowly getting back into it, and oh, big news! Well, not so big, but maybe big. <laughs> huge it's, news, it's guys! Humongous news! I'm going to offer free shipping to all orders thirty five dollars and over all the time, all the time, all the time. Domestic, domestic, domestic yeah. shipping. Sorry, international listeners. Sorry, if you are an international listener listener and would like to buy a bag and don't want to spend that much on your shipping message me we might be able to work something out if you buy something get a special keep calm and carry on shipping discount yeah <laughs> but only if you're a listener so those other muggles don't get the discount <laughs> <laughs> okay oh we're not ready to say goodbye now already are we <laughs> i think we are that's i mean we each only had one whip to talk about, <laughs> and we padded it with some talk about a lovely new, well, not new, new to you yarn store, and some fun facts about knitting and yarn. Yeah. So, ah, we had some good extra the stuff. The next time we record, we will both have been home, because <laughs> this time we were both traveling. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm not, I'm just really not a travel crafter. I well, feel like I think I want to be. I think it's harder to to crochet in the car than it is to knit in the car because well, you get, actually have to look at it. Yeah, and when I you're knitting, you don't sick. have to look at it. Yeah, but I if, can do it on the train sometimes. If we can invent a way where I can knit and drive at the same time, then I would get so much more done. Uh, self driving cars. <laughs> a push for that's how they market them. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> No, because I, mean, I no, had because <laughs> I had to drive. I had to make that drive again from New Hampshire all the way to Virginia. Uh-huh. When we um, left New Hampshire in August, we we left a car and a lawnmower behind. We I didn't want to drive two cars down because then because I wanted to 
drive with your dad. I wanted to knit in the car, basically, <laughs> mm-hmm. with the cat. You needed a chauffeur. Yeah. So we left the car up there. So when I went to visit Madeline, it w- the trip was not just to visit Madeline. It was also to bring the car down to here. Mm-hmm. I made the drive. I visited my parents in New Jersey and came down. And I forget the point of the story. Oh, so that's why I didn't get, I hardly got in, you know, as I'm driving, I was stuck in traffic for a long time in, uh, in the New York area. It took me seven hours, seven and a half hours to get from New Hampshire to my parents' house in New Jersey. It's only supposed to take five, five and a half hours. Yeah. So, um, I'm like, I stop and go, stop and go. I'm like, oh, I'm looking at my knitting. like, I wish I could just knit. <laughs> I was so tempted. Cars. So tempted to just like transport. lean over and just pull it out. But no, I couldn't do that. So, yeah, self-driving cars. Yeah, that does sound very good, telling Espe- you. especially for long trips like that. I am waiting for the future to happen. <laughs> well, partially because I just don't like to drive. So. Well, you don't even drive. so <laughs> No, but I've been told that I need to learn how to. And I just don't want to. I mean, you, wait, just to clarify, I can drive. You I just have don't have a driver's license to drive here because I don't know how to drive on the other side of the road and also roundabouts. <laughs> And six shifts. Yeah. Okay. I cannot drive a manual. But right. I think we are ready to say goodbye. Okay. okay. Goodbye. <laughs> do your spiel. I'll do the, yeah. Uh, so the show notes for this episode and all the other episodes are on our website, which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com. You can follow us on Instagram at kcacypodcast as well. And my personal Instagram is Allison here. My mom's is upstate underscore viv. Make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening to us, whether that be iTunes or YouTube or Stitcher or Overcast or Spotify or wherever else you might listen to podcasts. And like and comment, subscribe, and all those good things. It gives us the warm and fuzzies. And you can also join our Ravelry group. Just search for Keep Calm and Carry On Podcast in the group tab. Thank you for listening. And remember to keep calm and carry on. Hi, I'm... Nope. (laughs) (laughs) Who are you?